Because they're in the park a lot. I met this little lady here, and we talked, and she showed me her books, and I said, you should come to Caps and tell them. So, I'm going to hand them the microphone. This is Barbara and Brian, and then last thing went right up my head again. Dylan. Dylan. I, I, I'm, uh, only one brain cell left. <laughs> so, I'm going to let them have the microphone, I'm going to shut up and go over there and eat cupcakes and watch. <laughs> so, welcome. Barbara Dillon, this is Brian Dillon. Uh, we are the co-owners of Fanbase Press, and uh, we have been doing this for going on eight years now. So it's a labor of love. We love doing it. I don't think we'd be doing it this long if we didn't. Um, but we uh, wanted to come here today. Uh, thanks, of course, to the invitation. Uh, we know many of you in the audience, so we're glad to see some familiar faces here. We're also glad to meet new people. Um, and a big thing for me, I know when we do panels like this, is we love to interact with everyone. I don't want to feel like I'm just speaking at you. I want to hear you and hear what you have to say and hear your questions. We can be a pal for just hear your successes, your failures, or anything you feel comfortable sharing. So at, at any time, as we talk tonight, please feel free to shout out questions. If you feel more comfortable raising your hand, please feel free. Um, but we want to be mindful of questions that you may have and, and things that you want to share. So please feel free to do so and anything. Um, do you want to add anything before we start? That's great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so ultimately tonight, uh, what we're going to be doing is talking a little bit about Fanbase Press, what we do, uh, the services that we offer, of course the titles that we have published, and uh, how we can be of uh, assistance to you uh, as creators. So uh, why don't you so this is what we'll be talking about tonight in the overview because we need an agenda. And next people are so, uh, we're going to talk about Sandy Press, what our history is, what our mission is. Uh, we'll be talking about publishing and, as I said, the titles that we have put out thus far. Uh, we'll be talking about distribution, which we're talking to David and Lonnie about uh, at the break. So we'll be talking about that because there are many different avenues. Uh, both for comic book creators, for book creators, uh, for animators, there are lots of new avenues out there in comic book industry. So about that. Uh, submissions, if you're interested in submitting to Sandy Press for publishing inspiration, we'll talk about how we do so. Press and promotion, which is where you guys come in. Uh, how can we give assistance to you? All of the different things that we do through our website, through our company, at conventions, uh, pretty much everywhere, how we can be a service. Uh, which is what's next uh, And then Q&A, of course, open to questions, but again, please feel free to ask questions at any time, or just raise me your shout out, any thoughts, or inquiries, and then that's it. So, um, you know, get us started with who we are, because I feel like I'm just talking. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll so add my two cents when, okay. when necessary. So, uh, our tagline at Sandy Press is that we celebrate fandoms and create new ones. And uh, just a bit of our history, we have been around since 2010, and we actually started as a company called Fanboy Comics. Uh, in 2000, and I don't know what year, we kind of got the feeling, especially because we have so many uh, female staff members, female contributors, readership, uh, it's a huge part of probably the largest percentage of comic book readers out there is women right now. Um, so we wanted to be mindful and respectful of the fact that the term fanboy began to gain a negative connotation to it. So we wanted a place we wanted in our name to be very clear of this is who we are, this is what we're about. We want inclusivity, we want a safe space for creators, we want a safe space for fans, and we want you to get that right in the headline. So from our name, we want you to get that. So we actually talked about it a long time and decided to rebrand the fan base press, which we did about two years ago. Um, but part of that rebranding was really thinking about who we are and what we do, and we we are fans ourselves, if I'm sure that you are uh, both creators and fans yourself. So not only do we create, but we celebrate those who do so as well. And uh, we're all about positivity at Fan Base Press. So um, we celebrate things that we love. Uh, and uh, 
Yeah, you pretty much. I think you pretty much covered it. I mean, the only thing I would add is if you are unfamiliar with uh, fan base press, obviously, as Barbara mentioned, we are a publisher, but uh, we really uh, see sort of the evolving uh, world of comics and, and mostly geek culture in general as, as something where. Uh, for us, it was, it was important to diversify in a lot of ways. We do a lot of things. Barbara and I have uh, very different backgrounds, I guess, from a lot of uh, a lot of our fellow creators. We've taken part in all sorts of things, from uh, from stage theater to uh, filming to to obviously comic books and, and animation, things like that. But um, audio drama would be another uh, out of the box thing. But so the site, uh, in addition to being a publishing site, we offer reviews of other comics, movies, work like that. We have a, uh, a podcast network that hosts four podcasts right now. Uh, we post a number of editorials, examining all sorts of uh, things in geek culture. And um, there's probably a few things I'm thinking about that we do on the website, charity, drives, things like that, that uh, really round out, I guess, more than just the publishing site. So, and I think that encompasses as well our tagline of celebrating fandom because not only are we a publisher putting our own work out there, but again, we do want to celebrate other people by promoting their work and giving a platform to creators who otherwise may not have an opportunity to do so. Not everyone can work at the level of Marvel or DC, uh, Dark Horse, IDW, um, but that doesn't mean that the talent isn't there. And that doesn't mean that even if the talent isn't at the level of Marvel or DC, that they shouldn't still be celebrated and still have the opportunity to have readers see what they do and enjoy what they do because everyone has a story to share and so we want to give people the opportunity to share that story. So that's a little bit about uh, who we are. Publishing wise, we have been publishing again since 2010 and we actually started with two horror graphic novels um, <coughs> which were adapted from short uh, screenplays. Uh, one was filmed in its entirety but never released because we got started with the graphic novel creation and it just kind of took off from there. Uh, we loved doing it. The first graphic novel was quickly followed up with a second and then we started getting submissions from other creators and we never really looked back at film after <coughs> So, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things? Sure. Um, so, as Barbara mentioned, our first titles we started off were uh, horror titles. Uh, our first Book Something Animal uh, was the one that Barbara mentioned was a, a short film before a, a graphic novel. Basically a look at the vampire mythology where instead of getting superpowers or fangs, it's more akin to a terminal disease. Uh, uh, it has a, a psychological aspect to it where we lead it to the reader to decide whether something supernatural is going on with the character or whether it's something he's experiencing all in his head. Uh, we followed that up with Identity Thief. Uh, that uh, deals with a young couple moving into a new apartment and uh, dealing with a monster that's in their closet, living in a hatch, coming out and doing all sorts of creepy things to them in their possession. Um, Fearworm is was sort of a, a step uh, outside of the comic book arena for us. Uh, it's written and illustrated by uh, Robert Payne Cabine. Uh, you might know him as a screenwriter, screenwriter of Heavy Metal 2000, also does a lot of poetry and horror stories. Uh, this book was actually uh, nominated for a Bram Stoker Award. Each poem tells uh, sort of a, tw a twisted little uh, story, and uh, Bob's artwork accompanies it. It's just a stunning uh, thing that we were very lucky to, to be able to produce. And the cover is done by uh, Bill Clinton yeah. as well. We were truly really honored to have him do the Going a little bit more, I guess, wacky, uh, you've got Penguin vs. Possum, Volume 1 and Volume 2 there in the middle. Uh, that's more of like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, tone to it. Uh, Barbara likes to describe it as Game of Thrones with Penguins and Possums. But uh, it, it is just as intense and epic and weird as it sounds. Um, the creators did a really great thing where they balanced out uh, the, the uh, hilarity and the comedy with uh, characters that you really care what happens to them. So while there is a lot of fun and enjoyment, you also care about uh, the arc of each character, and it's, it's not a complete arc. Um, the arc is uh, sort of a, a middle ground, I would say. It's an epic uh, war fantasy about the archangels fighting a losing battle against the, uh, the forces of, of hell, demons, and uh, monsters and such. 
Um, a lot of cool mythology aspects there from the, the creative team where they took uh, uh, what you might think you know about demons or angels and, and sort of turned it on its head a little bit. And then uh, the last year or so has pretty much been us stepping into uh, what is a big arena in comics, uh, the YA and younger reader uh, arena. Um, we always wanted to be a company that sort of had a, uh, a wide spread to the, the genres that we were tackling. And uh, so we started doing our first uh, superhero books. We started off with Hero Hotel by Yuzuki Mercado, uh, Mercado and uh, a number of other creators. He has uh, quite a uh, cadre of friends who are just as talented as him. But this one's all about a young boy who works at a hotel for superheroes, really fun parodies of the uh, superheroes <coughs> you uh, might know or the, the sort of flourishing uh, cinematic universes out there. And then uh, we followed that up with uh, two books uh, that focused on female superheroes. One, The Gamma Gal, uh, which is uh, by Stefano Terry, both writer and artist. And uh, that one's all about some young girls who are in high school in a very uh, sort of Peter Parker-esque way. They, uh, they get superpowers from uh, a gamma irradiated storm that passes through town. And uh, it's not too long before they discover that they're not the only ones who uh, receive superpowers from the storm. Oh, no. And then uh, Kinse, which has been a, uh, a real uh, a real big hit for us this year. This is all about a little girl named Lupe who uh, gets superpowers on her quinceanera. And uh, she only has them for one year. Uh, we started this one out digitally first. Uh, we really uh, doubled down on the, the Kinse theme. So there were 15 issues that came out on the 15th of every month. And uh, for the digital version, we were able to publish it both in Spanish and English. Uh, for the physical version, we so far only released the, the English version, but uh, it's doing well. We hope maybe somewhere down the road we'll be able to release the physical version uh, for the Spanish. But, um, but yeah, this is, this is pretty much our, our line so far. We've tried to, to tap into a little bit of everything. And uh, the nice thing about it is when someone comes to the table or we're engaging with someone at an event like this, there's usually something in the line that we can find that appeals to each individual.